Regular followers of the channel will know that we cover Starship Simulator, Nuclear Option and Star Trucker here as well as Elite Dangerous. All these simulator titles have, this week, had important information drops. In this video we're going to take a look at the news from the three titles and the video has chapter links in the description if you want to skip to the game that's of most interest to you. So first out the gate then Starship Simulator the free roaming simulation of a multi-deck sci-fi starship set in a 1 to 1 scale procedural recreation of the Milky Way galaxy had a significant benchmark this week when the team at Fleet Yard Studios announced that the Kickstarter pre-launch page was now up and running. The Kickstarter pre-launch page, whilst still short of the actual Kickstarter itself, allows anyone interested to register their interest so that they can be notified when the Kickstarter, which is absolutely necessary for the forward development of the game, goes live. It also has the added and equally as important benefit of letting the Starship team at Fleet Yard Studios know how much interest there is out there for the Kickstarter. Right now Fleet Yard have let it be known that they're working hard on the Starship exterior redesign that we covered a few weeks back and a new trailer. You can likely expect the Kickstarter to go live shortly after that work is finished. To register your interest check out the Starship Simulator Kickstarter pre-launch page linked in the description below this video. The accessible combat flight simulator Nuclear Option posted a couple of updates earlier this month letting go some details on the newest aircraft that they're adding to the game in the next update 0.27. The plane, called the EW25 Medusa, is a very different beast to the existing arsenal of fictional near future warbirds for a number of reasons not least of which is the fact that it's the first short takeoff vertical landing aircraft to enter the game. The EW25 features Harrier jump jet style rotating nozzles on either side of the fuselage that are able to redirect the jet thrust from the engine downwards to aid in a very short takeoff distance of just 100 meters. and when the fuel level in the plane is 80% or less it means the aircraft will also be able to fully hover. The EW moniker in the planes designation stands for Electronic Warfare and whilst full details on the planes capabilities are still light it is looking likely that the Medusa might be joining the fight with much more of a support role over its more offence based existing counterparts. As well as being Stovall capable we know that the Medusa will be capable of wielding the games first directed energy weapon in the form of a laser but after an in cockpit screenshot was released earlier in the month by the games developer B25 Mitch it seems likely that far from being something you might expect to find in popular science fiction the laser beam in nuclear option is much more grounded in reality. The screenshot that you can see on screen now appears to show the Medusa using the laser on an inbound missile as a countermeasure or perhaps as an overall battlefield missile defence system. New HUD elements in the top right of the screen show a capacitor bleeding power as the laser fires on what appears to be a surface to air missile that is a little under a kilometre and a half away. This is very similar to real world systems that have been tested by the defence industry so it'll be interesting to see how the system plays out in Nuclear Option. Whilst we're talking weapons the developer has let it be known that update 0.27 will ship with 4 new types of weapons at least. The post from the official Nuclear Option Discord was accompanied by a screenshot of one of the games TA30 Compass aircraft releasing ordnance that is similar in appearance to some contemporary longer range glide bomb units. There's no known release window for update 0.27 to Nuclear Option just yet. As soon as we know we'll report it here but the game has proven popular in our community so we're very much looking forward to seeing what changes these new toys bring to the battlefield. The official Nuclear Option Discord server is playing host to the games first ever competitive team PvP event. The Nuclear Option competitive smackdown is being hosted by the games developers and is looking for teams of 7 to compete against each other on a balanced version of the games escalation scenario. To take part yourself check out the post in the community events section of the Nuclear Option Discord server which is linked below. 
Star Trucker, the stylistic truck simulator style game set in space that we featured in our watched games list at the start of this year is getting a free to download demo. No details are yet available about the contents of the demo specifically but we do know it will be available as part of the Steam Next Fest that runs between the 5th and the 12th of February. Star Trucker is shaping up to be a nicely chilled out single player truck driving style sim with an obvious twist on the established genre that brings with it spacewalks, a ship interior space and some gorgeous handcrafted environments all of which is set to an atmospheric Americana soundtrack. We're really looking forward to trying this one out when Steam Next Fest hits on the 5th of February. Have you lodged your interest in the Starship Kickstarter? Are you looking forward to more support based gameplay in Nuclear Option and will you be trying out the chilled vibes of Star Trucker in February? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe so YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to help support our work here at the Burr Pit you can also join our Patreon. Links to that and everything we've talked about in the video you'll find linked below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.